the end of July and there's a lot of good stuff in the garden. So as I was wandering around and there eating pea pods last night, I thought to myself, perfect time of year to make a really good vegetable soup. Vegetable soup is not difficult to make. If you end up with a big pot of soup, you can always seal it in jars and save it in your refrigerator for about six weeks. It's a handy dandy after work meal. And yes, it's kind of warm out, but it's overcast today. And so perhaps you won't think too much about the heat as you're enjoying this flavorful vegetable soup, just packed full of vitamins. And here's the easy way to do it. We're going to start by creating our stock. When I was young, my mother used to boil her vegetables to death and then cut them up and leave them in the soup and everything was soggy and there was lots of flavor, but it wasn't very appetizing. I have then since learned that this is how to make a really good and easy soup stock. First of all, you're going to need um, scraps. Yes, that's right. If you ever come across somebody who has an empty bag in their freezer, it's there for a reason. It's because when they cut up Celery, you save all the celery tops. If you got onion ends, you save the onion ends. Here's a piece of zucchini that just, you know, isn't up to grade anymore. Uh, and you save all this stuff in the freezer in a bag like this. And then when it's soup stock day, you start by taking a piece of sirloin steak, round steak, um, a chuck roast, any kind of meat like that, unless you're vegetarian, in which case you could eliminate the meat completely and use lots of onion and garlic, broccoli, um, cabbage, and zucchini to kind of make the same sort of soup stock. So in, in the bottom of this pan I placed this piece of sirloin steak. It's a nice looking piece of meat. We buy our beef by the side or by the half and that way we have um, this is from last year and you know we might eat it someday or somehow but rather than let it go to waste I thought I'm gonna make some really good soup with that but then as I was rummaging through my freezer I also found uh, a part of the chicken that we don't normally cook when we cook a chicken so you save all your scraps and trimmings from your meat if you like a beef stock or a chicken stock for your soup and then when the soup day comes like I said before you want to place all these things in the pan with lots and lots of garlic and I have lots and lots of garlic from the garden um, some of it didn't perform as well some of it I won't be able to keep and so I am going to actually um, use it for soup stock. I use it, chop it up for cooking. We had some last night for supper and of course I can taste it this morning because it comes out your pores. But an easy way to prepare that garlic is, you know, you, it doesn't matter when you're making soup stock what you put in here. You put a little onion skin in there, um, crappy looking vegetables because this is all going to be taken out of the soup stock. Here's a piece of garlic or a garlic clove. You just give it a mush with the knife like that and it kind of helps get that peel off. This is a nice spicy garlic variety. I'm going to just throw the whole toes in there. Mmm, nummy, nummy, nummy. And as you know, garlic, you can put lots of garlic in because garlic actually loses its flavor as it cooks. Now, we also need to put in some spices. Let's see now. We are looking for some black pepper. We're going to sprinkle that over the top. We are not going to salt the soup until the very end. Um, there are several reasons for that and we'll get into that later on. Here's something my mother always did. She always put in a bay leaf or two in all of her soup stock, so we're going to tuck those there. As you can see, I buy these by bulk too, so I'm going to put three of them in. Actually, have some soup stock that I had frozen left over from the last time I made soup that I will use in preparation for this soup stock. I'm looking for allspice balls. My mother has always put little tiny allspice balls. I have it ground all over the place. Ginger, oh, here we go, whole, whole allspice balls. Don't ask me what it is. They're just a tiny little black ball. That's a little flavor to the soup. Now, we're not adding any water to this. We're going to roast the vegetables and roast the meat 
has a much richer flavor and all that stuff that kind of cooks to the bottom of the pan will come out when we deglaze and it'll have an absolutely phenomenal flavor. Absolutely phenomenal. Okay, put this in the oven at 350 degrees for about an hour. You can check it. You can leave it in a little longer if you're busy working. Uh, the vegetables will wilt, the meat will get brown, it will start to smell so delightful. You can put in as many onions as you want to because like I said before, all of this stuff will come out of the stock and just leave behind this fabulous, aromatic, flavorful broth. One other thing that you can do is start to prepare some of your vegetables. I picked a bunch of beets this morning and what I do is I cull the beets that are in between the little beets so that the little beets have room to grow. That way you can eat beets all season long and they still are full rows. I'm going to see if I can't pick this one out of here. Um, you don't have to do too much to them in the first place except wash most of the dirt off and then trim the tops. Um, there's leaves on here and other such things. It doesn't matter. It's all coming off in the wash. Now you want to put them in the pan, bring them to boil, and then turn the water down so that it simmers gently. You never want to boil your vegetables. That's bad for them. You never want to boil your soup stock. That's also bad for them. Takes the flavor away instead of leaves it in the broth. And we're only cooking those beets long enough so that they're tender and so that the peelings will slip off quite easily. And I will show you how to do that and what else to do to your soup stock when we come back. I'll see you in about an hour. Okay, we're going to slip some skins off some beets right now. And since I don't want to stain my fingers, it's either me or the beets you'll be seeing in this video. And after looking at my first take, I'm thinking, yeah, I think the beets are better looking, aren't they? Okay, compost. Yes, what I don't throw in the freezer for soup stock, I put in a compost bin. And we compost both hot method and cold composting. And I will talk more about that at a later date. But for right now, beets have been simmered and they're nice and soft. And look at that. Those skins just slip right off of there. Now I'm going to keep the beets away from my other vegetables even though in the end they're all going to be put back in the kettle together but we're going to chop the top off of this beet there we go oh there seems to be a little a little spot here that probably didn't get under the water all the way but for the most part you just slide those off and we're going to rinse it off a little bit they're still warm which is another reason why i have my gloves on and I'm just going to lay them on here. Oh, there's a little bit of skin right there. So we're just going to roll that right off of there. Yeah, beets are good for you. Beets are good, 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 good food. Okay, so we're going to take another one. We're going to cut the top off. Cut the root end off a little bit. Rinse it off and there you go. See how easy that is to peel a beet? Now these are cooked. You don't have to worry about them being hard when you put them in your soup. Um, we will cut them up and I will show you that in just a minute here. Maybe I'll show you that when I cut the rest of the vegetables up. I have a little trick for cutting beets so that they're all the same size. It's very clever. Our soup stock is still in the oven roasting but I can already smell I can smell the spices I can smell the onions yum 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 here's some more bounty from the garden this morning I do the same thing with carrots as I do with beets I cull them as I go and we eat the smaller ones because that's the beauty of it all and you do not need to peel garden carrots no siree Bob they do not have that tough skin on there you'll just be washing them off like this and adding them to your pile of vegetables for your soup. And so, it's back to work for a few more minutes and then we'll continue on. Alrighty then, we have toasted up that delightful piece of meat down there. And here are all of the lightly browned onions. And see, the zucchini and the other vegetables added quite a bit of water. But we're not done with the soup stock yet. Isn't that just beautiful? So, we're going to 
spray everything into my kettle. I dusted off my kettle. It's been a long time since I've done soup stock. Uh, yay, okay, we're gonna do that. We're going to pull that piece of meat out of there. And we're going to save that until later on. We'll reintroduce it back into the soup so it still will have some flavor. Um, unless you don't like beef in your soup. And sometimes I don't like beef in my soup. But my husband does. <laughs> so we're, what we're going to do is we're going to we're just pull that piece of beef out of there. Um, and mostly because it was an expensive cut of beef that we're going to save that for later. And now you see there's still good stuff down here in the bottom of the pan. Um, if you use a flatter pan, it probably would have roasted a little bit more and not steamed so much. You don't really want it to steam, but it doesn't really matter. So we're going to scrape that in there. And then we had this leftover soup stock from the last time I made soup. And we're going to add that to here. And of course, it's still kind of frozen. Now, this is basically chicken stock. <clears throat> what I do is I will cook, cook the stock and then I will cool it and scrape the fat off of it. The flavor stays behind. But you can remove nearly all the fat, the extra fat from soup stock, which is something that just isn't very appealing to dip into a nice bowl of soup and come out with a mouthful of grease. So we're going to put this kettle on the stove and let it start to simmer. Um, and we're going to add some water. We're going to add the water to the roasting pan, kind of stir that out of there. Doesn't matter, I always use cold water. We're going to add about a roaster full of water because if you're like me, eventually this soup is going to grow to the point where you're going to have to have an army come in and help you. Oops, sorry about that. Okay, so we're going to get that going on there. If you do not want to make your own soup stock out of your own beef and your own vegetables, you most certainly can use uh, Swanson's chicken broth in the great big carton. I kind of like that stuff um, just for emergency purposes. Here are some edamame pods that I froze last year that I'm going to use in the soup because they've been in there a year and even though my edamame did not grow this year, I just love this stuff and I want to get them used up because it's time to start canning and freezing vegetables and fruits. And we can certainly talk some more about that at a later date. But this is going to be my vegetable collection point. And as I go through the day, since your soup stock's gonna gonna have to, you know, still cook for a while, we're gonna start, uh, you know, during your coffee breaks during the day. Or, well, I guess if you know, don't work at home like I do, you probably can't do that. Maybe you want to try this on a Saturday first of all. You'll get pretty good at getting organized. Get your vegetables all cut up. Get your soup stock. You can start your soup, soup stock on a Monday for a weekend soup because the more it cooks, the better it gets. Um, but see how easy those edamames come out of there. So, And what are we going to do with this? That is correct. Into the compost bin. This is the time of year when we have tons of compost. So we're going to work on those. We're going to slice up some onions for in there. Remember our beets? Here we have one of those beautiful beets. And here we have a french fry cutter. If you're too young to remember that this used to be how you made french fries rather than go to a fast food restaurant, that's okay. But here we go. Look how easy we can make slices or dices of beets. And look, you've got tiny little squares for in your soup. Your kids will never know that you did this yourself. Now if you can get them lined up like this and give them a quick chop. Give these a little quick chop. And then I'll show you a few other things we're going to add in at a later date. But for the moment, it's back to work. Well, it's about that time of the afternoon. We've got to finish our soup. So the first thing I did was I drained off
the soup stock scraps, as you can see. Kind of looks terrible, doesn't it? Because all of the flavor is from there into here. So, now what we want to do is probably compost that. Well, you don't want to compost any meat scraps. Um, I chopped up the rest of my beets. I did some onions. I've got some pea pods here. I'm going to actually use my trusty kitchen shears. You can just start adding your vegetables. So, we have, don't forget, anything that's edible can go in, or anything organic, I'm sorry, anything that you don't want to eat that's organic can go into the compost container. Yeah, it's too bad I don't have any full board peas, but we ate those as pea pods earlier in the year, so we're just going to stick a few of these in. You know, you, you hate to waste anything that comes out of the garden. It's always nice to have a variety of vegetables. And let's see. Oh, I forgot the carrots, too. I'm going to put this back on the stove. I don't want to waste all your time watching me chop stuff up. But you see we have a variety of carrots in the garden this year. Beautiful normal orange ones and of course some little purple ones here. And you can make these chunks as big or as little as you want. Garden carrots do not have to be peeled. I may have mentioned that earlier today. You do not have to peel them. They have wonderful soft exteriors. All you gotta do is brush a little of that dirt off. Look at that. Isn't that about the prettiest thing you ever saw? The soup is going to be colorful and really appealing to the eye. Okay, so we're going to add the vegetables. As soon as I get them all chopped up, we're gonna add the vegetables to the soup. We're gonna let it cook until they're tender. Do not boil your soup. If you don't want to eat it this evening, save it till tomorrow. It'll be that much better because that's the way this works. If you have potatoes, you can put potatoes in. I couldn't find any quickly this morning, so I just bypassed that. Potato patch. You can put in strips of cabbage, um, maybe some kale if you wish. Be a little brave. Use some Swiss chard. So, we'll dump that into the soup stock we made. And we will allow it to just gently simmer until it's done. And here's the final thing you want to do. Go out to the garden and get yourself some dill. Ah, oh, lovely, fresh and soft, feathery dill. And when you season it with your salt, probably five minutes before you serve it, throw the dill in. And let the flavor of fresh dill make this soup extraordinary. I'll get a picture of it to show you later, but now I can't wait to get it back on the burner.